Yo, what's up, y'all, and welcome back to Keep It Techy, where we focus on Linux and helping more folks break into tech. And today we're diving into Terraform, one of the most powerful infrastructure as code tools out there. And guess what? We're getting it installed and set up right here on Ubuntu. So if you're trying to level up your DevOps game or just automate some cloud deployments, this video is for you. So let's get to it. <laughs> All right, before we get started with the install, let's talk about what Terraform is and why you should care about it. First off, Terraform is an open source infrastructure as code tool created by HashiCorp. And as you can see, I'm at terraform.io and this is where you wanna go in order to get the software as well as check out the documentation and all that great information that's out there for Terraform. And of course, I'll have that link down in the description of the video. And just to break down a little bit more of Terraform, it helps you automate cloud infrastructure deployments. So think AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, and even on-prem, which is what I want to focus on today by using my Proxmox server. But the beauty of Terraform, you define everything in code. So infrastructure is repeatable, scalable, and version controlled. And this means no more manual clicks in a cloud dashboard. Everything is pretty much automated. And so if you're getting into DevOps or systems administration, or you could be trying to do cloud engineering, well, learning Terraform is a major W. Now, let me talk about the different things things you could do on a different provider. So AWS, you could deploy uh, EC2 instances as buckets and other cloud resources. Also in Azure, you can manage virtual machines, networking and storage in Microsoft Azure. And then you can also automate compute instances, storage and Kubernetes clusters on Google Cloud provider. And like I said, we're gonna use Proxmox today, but you can automate your VM creation on-prem using Proxmox VE. And for the demo, like I said, we'll focus on Proxmox, but just know that Terraform can be used across multiple platforms, even at the same time. All right, so let's get Terraform installed on Ubuntu so we can start managing our Proxmox virtual machines. What's up, y'all? If you've been watching my channel for a minute, you already know I stay talking about Linux. And if you're looking for a solid, reliable enterprise Linux distro, let me put you on to Rocky Linux. This is the go-to replacement for CentOS, and it's built for the community by the community. It's got everything you need for a stable and secure Linux experience, whether you're running servers, home labs, or enterprise workloads. And the best part is backed by CIQ, making sure it stays rock solid for the long haul. So if you're tired of these companies pulling a plug on your favorite distros, Rocky Linux is where you need to be. And I've covered Rocky Linux before, and trust me, it's worth checking out. So head over to rockylinux.org to learn more and get started. All right, so I'm logged into my virtual machine. This is Ubuntu 24.04, but let me run you guys through the quick install of Terraform. So all you have to do is type sudo apt updates. And of course you want to update your system. That's the first thing you want to do every single time. Now this system I'm sure is updated, but I'm going to run the commands regardless. So you guys can at least see and follow along in case yours is not. So let's go down, press enter and type in our password, press enter. And that'll go through and check and see if we have any updates and then update the system if there are any. And so the next thing we need to do is install a couple dependencies in order to get Terraform installed on Linux. At least you need wget as well as unzip because the binary file from HashiCorp for Terraform, you have to download it and it downloads in a zip file. And I'll show you guys that. You'll see why it's needed a little later, but let's go to install our dependencies. Both of these dependencies should be installed, not always with unzip, but I know wget is installed. So let's go to and type both of them in and whichever one is not installed, it'll install it. So that's why, and then wget, and then like I said, un zip that way we can unzip the archive that we have to download from their sites and yeah unzip is not installed so we have to install it right fast so that was a very quick install but let's switch back over to our website so i can show you guys how to get the binary files so we're back on HashiCorp. all you have to do is type downloads and this will display all the different ways you can install it you can install it on mac os you can install it on windows and what we're going to install it on is linux and you bunch to debian base but you also have options for CentOS, rail fedora amazon linux homebrew freebsd openbsd and solaris all right there so you can go through and check out all these different versions and the current release we're going to download the ubuntu package but the current release is 1.11.2 so you want to make sure you get that copy of it but this is the am64 
Yeah, you can put it on a Raspberry Pi with the ORM64. There's the ORM version and then 38.6. You can download that as well. So let's go down and copy this link. And I know you guys can see it, but I'm going to copy that link and then go back to our terminal. And we're going to use the wget command to download Terraform. So let's type wget and then let's paste our link in there and press enter. And I'll go down and download our binary file for it. Now let's go down and unzip it right fast. So just type unzip and then find that file. It should be in the whatever directory you were in. If you were in your home directory like me, it'll be downloaded right in that directory. So let's unzip it right fast. And then also LS right fast so you guys can see what we need to get. So what we need to do is copy that Terraform directory into our user local bin directory. And actually don't copy it, go down and move it. So it's you can always extract it again if you need another copy of it. So let's go down and knock that out right fast. But all you gotta do is type sudo move. So MV specify that Terraform folder and then let's move it to our user local bin. And this will allow anyone to access it, any user to access it on your system, and they'll be able to access that binary file there. So if we type Terraform and then version, this will tell us the version. It should be that same version that we downloaded, like you, you can see right there. So 1.11.2, that is the Terraform version we have installed on our system. And so boom, we are good to go. Now, let me show you guys how to configure it for Proxmox. And this is the way you configure it for whatever provider that you're using. I'm just showing you guys the process on Proxmox. One thing you wanna do is create you a project directory. So make DIR and you can type whatever you want. I'm gonna just put T form and press enter and then let's CD to T form and press enter. And that's our Terraform project. We can, you can name it whatever you want. It doesn't matter. Now let's go on and create our configuration file for it. And this is the TF file. It's the extension is TF. So I'm gonna just name it TF. You can name it whatever you want. It doesn't matter, but just follow Along. if you don't know what you want to name it just name it main.tf uh, so we're going to use nano for that but you can use whatever text editor you want to use for creating this file so let's go down and press enter and let me show you guys how to get this thing set up so the first thing you need to specify is your provider now if you're using aws then you specify aws and you put the location and your credentials and all that good stuff what i'm doing is using proxmox like that's like we talked about and so i already have account set up and it's the same thing with the cloud aws you have to have a aws account you have to have a way to connect to it i'm using an api key for proxmox so it's a little bit different so you need to find out the way you set up the provider based on what you're using but I already have an account set up in my server and, and I have this set up for a production server that I have within my network where I run Terraform. And so it doesn't use these accounts. It has different accounts. I'm just doing these. So don't try to hack me or whatever. And these accounts won't work. The other ones are like super hidden as much as I can. Nothing is truly safe, but I created this account specifically for this video. So it won't be on here at all after today. But yeah, you set up your provider. And then there's a couple other settings in here. So this is your Terraform section. This just sets up the rest of the configuration for Proxmox. And then lastly, I'm gonna show you guys how to actually create a virtual machine. And like I said, I have all this broken up this way. That's just the way I like to look at it. This is how you set up your provider pretty much up there at the top. And then what you actually want Terraform to do, which is down below, which is setting up our virtual machine. So what I'm gonna do is use a template on my server and I'm gonna do a clone of it essentially using Terraform and I'm gonna specify the name I'm gonna specify the target and this is all based on your network you have to make the changes based on your network and whatever you're using Terraform on so if it's one of those cloud providers whatever naming convention you got up there you want to make sure you have all that stuff set properly as well as your disk size or your disk settings however all this stuff is set up you need to specify within Terraform and I know I keep repeating myself but I just want to make sure you guys know that what I'm typing you won't be able to just type this and run it towards like an AWS server or a Azure server or a VM or something like that, it will not work because it's not set up this exact same way as how I have things set up on prem in Proxmox. Like for instance, I'm using ZFS for storage. So it's going to create a 20 gigabyte SCSI local ZFS storage file for my virtual machine. And then my network, it all depends on how your network is set up. So all this stuff could be different. And then also the way you want to name it, as well as I'm cloning a virtual machine that's already there. If that virtual machine is not there, it's going to error out. 
So you need to understand your network. That's essentially what I'm trying to say. For instance, right here as well, this is the VM ID within Proxmox. You have IDs for the virtual machines. Yeah, you have those names, but the IDs is really what matters. You can have multiple virtual machines with the same name, but the ID is really what distinguishes the different virtual machines that are on your network. Oh, and I didn't break this down right here, but you set your memory and you can set your CPU, how you want that set up. I got two cores, one socket, all that good stuff. So pretty much that's everything I need in order to create one. And I, I just want to show you guys an example. So let's go on and save this file. This is our configuration file and go down and exit out of that file and so now that our configuration is ready let's go down and deploy the server now the first thing you need to do is initialize terraform and so let's type terraform and it's a couple commands i'm gonna run that start with terraform so you guys can see but we need to initialize terraform by typing init so terraform init press enter and terraform will basically download the proxmox provider that we need and as you can see installed tailmate proxmox as well as cell sign key and all that stuff that it needs and, and it's all based on the provider so it'll download the aws plugins that it need on your system and proxmox is what i'm using so that's why i say it's totally different depending on what provider you're using let's go on and test out our code that we wrote in our configuration file and the way you do that is terraform and then plan and this command will check what terraform will create and print it out for you so we can go back up to the top you'll see what it's actually going to do so it'll connect to my proxmox uh server and create this virtual machine it's going to name it ubuntu underscore vm because it's a ubuntu server i set it up that way the bios but it'll use a default so known after the plot after uh, applying and all our little settings that we put in our configuration file it'll put it on here for us the vm id i don't know if you guys remember that and then I actually target, target node and I will have to show you my server so you guys can see everything. This is the storage location, SCSI, all that stuff. And then the rest of the network, it'll set up the network for us. All we have to do in order to create this virtual machine is run the next com command, which is Terraform apply. And you'll see it right down here. This will let you know how to check the code. And trust me, if you ran into some errors, you'll see red up in here. So I know we're good to go. We may run into some issues. I'm not 100% sure. I haven't used this account before. Like I said, I created it specifically for this video. So I'm not sure if it's going to work, but hopefully it works the first time. I'll be surprised if it does. Let's see Terraform apply and press enter. And it looks like it might work, but you have to type in this to continue because it's basically saying, are you sure you want to create this virtual machine? And it says Terraform will perform the actions described above. So type only yes will be accepted and approved. So let's type yes and press enter and boom, it is creating our virtual machine. So I'm actually surprised that it actually worked because that means I did my permissions correctly on Proxmox. I haven't created an account in Proxmox in forever, bro. And it's for to remember that stuff. That's why I have like my documentation website that I reference. I actually have an admin area where I keep a lot of things that I built in my home lab up there, not passwords or anything, but just configurations and how I set things up. And I followed some of that stuff, not knowing if it was going to work or not. And it actually worked. So let me pause and I'll come back when it completes because it has to create this full virtual machine. So I'll be back in a second. And actually, let's switch over to the web browser. And then let me show you that it is creating this virtual machine. You'll see VM 126. This is the new virtual machine that is creating for us with all those requirements that we specified. And the reason I could tell because it has that lock on it. I know the way Proxmox works. Right now it says status stopped, config locked, and clone. It's being cloned. So just wanted to at least show you guys that. But I'll be back when it finishes. All right, so our virtual machine has been created. And it looks like we ran into a couple of errors, but just ignore them. These have to do with the Proxmox provider plugin that's added to Terraform. But I know that it created it successfully because I'm looking at it on Proxmox. And actually, let me switch over so you guys can see. But that is our virtual machine, the one that's highlighted. So we can actually store it up and everything. I'm not, but yeah, I'll just start it up right fast so you guys can see that it used the configuration that we set. So that's two CPUs, eight gigs, and you don't have to go through the hardware, but it created everything the way we specified in our Terraform configuration file. Now let's switch back over to the terminal. Since we got this error, I know for a fact it did not register that it completed it, even though it created it. It says error request canceled. It actually created it. Just like I said, just ignore that. I should have probably updated the plugin and my be what the issue is but it's all good it created the actual virtual machine but by it not completing and airing out we actually can't destroy it 
using Terraform because it sees it as it did not create it, but the command to actually destroy the virtual machine if you wanted to, you could just type Terraform and actually I lost connection to this server and let's go down and connect back to it right fast and the way to destroy it. Let's get back in that term directory and it looks like, oh, it might have had a IP conflict too. So that's why it's actually logging into the other server. And I know that for a fact, that's why, cause it's not showing any of my previous commands or actually let's see. Yeah, it's not showing anything. I don't have anything in the home directory or not. So let me go on and exit out. That is an IP conflict. I know that for sure. And that's probably something I should have fixed in my configuration file. So let me switch back over to the site right fast. And what I'm gonna do is go into the console and actually I could have just stayed over there on the terminal, but let's log into this virtual machine, this newly created one. As you can see, it has that same IP address that we had in there. As you can see, it needs updates right here as well. It says it's more than a week old. So that lets you know that is a copy and it has the same IP address as the other one that we created. So let me go down and shut this one down so I can go back to the one where we have Terraform on it. So sudo shut down now, press enter. And then I switch back over to the terminal and we can get back into the one that has Terraform installed on it. And yeah, that it, it took a while to come up because it was trying to find the IP. So let's go down and log back into it. And cool. So we're good to go. And if we LS this directory, yeah, you'll see that's the T form. So the way you get rid of it, since we had the error, like I said, it won't show that it completed that virtual machine. So you actually can't run the Terraform destroy command. And actually you have to type it right, but destroy and press enter and see it doesn't see it so i just want you guys to know that it'll see any of the virtual machines that it created or that it managed as far as using terraform to create it so it cannot destroy anything because it didn't create anything or it thinks that it didn't create anything even though it errored out but you shouldn't run into that issue as long as everything is configured properly and get an error like I got. All right, so that's it. We installed Terraform. We configured it for Proxmox and deployed a virtual machine automatically, which was super cool to actually see. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys got something out of it and get a better understanding of how Terraform works. I know it's not using the cloud providers like most people show you out here on YouTube, which I'll probably do another video showing you guys Terraform. And I'll just I use my AWS account account or create a separate one specifically for this because that was the problem and that was the reason why I didn't want to show you that way because you got to show credentials and all that stuff which I can hide it but I wanted to just stick with Proxmox just to make it simple I'm gonna delete this stuff I control all this stuff so I don't have to worry about anybody trying to get into it or I'm forgetting a user account out there that's not supposed to be out there when this video goes up and people are using it but anyway if you found this helpful go down and drop a like and let me know if you want more Terraform plus Proxmox automation content and I hope you guys have an awesome week and of course keep it techy Yo, what's up, y'all? Listen, if you've been sitting there thinking about making a move, let me tell you, tech is where it's at. I don't care where you're coming from, whether you've got a degree, a GED, or just pure hustle. There's room for you in this game. You see, tech is more than just keyboards and code. It's solving problems, creating opportunities, and building the future. You already have what it takes because tech doesn't care where you start. It cares where you're willing to go. You can teach yourself Linux, learn Python, break into cybersecurity, or even launch your own app. And the resources are out here for free. And yes, you heard me, free. Now, yeah, it's gonna take effort. You'll have to grind, but think about this. The time is gonna pass anyway. So why not invest it in a skill that'll change your life? I mean, tech doesn't just pay the bills. It opens doors to freedom, stability, and generational wealth. So stop doubting yourself, store small, stay consistent, and keep building. Because this isn't just a career, it's a movement. And guess what? You belong here. So let's get it. Because the future is yours to build. Keep it taking.